Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In 1 Peter chapter 1, the Apostle Peter writes, Like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. Lois and Ruth team up with me as we sing, Take Time to Be Holy. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions, and we search God's holy word, the Bible, in order to find the answers. Question number one. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 6, what is meant by their dark sayings? Let me read that one proverb. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, and that is read out of the King James Version, which uses that as well as other translations also use that expression, dark sayings. It might be implied that here we have dark sayings, which are some uh, darkness sometimes equated with evil or wicked sayings. Rather, the meaning of the word is a knot. The the root of the word ties to also the picture of a knot and how I think each and every one of us have undoubtedly struggled at some time with a, a knot that we have had difficulty getting untied. And here we have a obscure declaration or an involved utterance, a riddle or an enigma a dark saying, something that is in the dark, and sometimes it's a little difficult to bring it out into the light and to work with it. It's in the dark. It's, it's a difficult 
situation, well, think of a knot. We also have this very same phrase, once again, in the King James Version and others, in Psalm 49 and verse 4, the psalmist says, I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp, or Psalm 78 and verse 2, I will open my mouth in a parable, I will utter dark sayings of old. Once again, these are not things that are to be shunned, rather they are things that are plainly a bit difficult, but they are to be brought out into the light and those who are wise, and here we're dealing with wisdom literature in the Psalms as well as in the Proverbs, here we're being instructed on how it is that we are wise in the Lord and that we walk through this difficult world with wisdom that is granted us by the Lord himself. Question number two, is James chapter 4 and verse 4 God's criminal code. That's a strikingly interesting way of expressing this, and interesting indeed to, to come to it. James chapter, the whole book of James, the whole letter of James, has to do with those who are believers in Christ walking in wisdom. Once again, James has echoes, it has reminiscences of the Old Testament book of Proverbs. James, he gives us pithy statements of truth, pithy uh, ideas on how we are to live rightly before the Lord. They are sayings of a man who has grown wise in the Lord. Here at the beginning of chapter 4, he says, What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not the source of your, ple the, your pleasures that wage war in your members? He talks about you commit murder, you are envious, you do not have because you do not ask. You ask, but you don't receive because you ask with horrible motives. Then verse 4, the very verse that we're dealing with, it says, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? And then it says, therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Think of it in this way. A person who wants to be a friend of criminals and to throw in their lot with criminals and to enter in completely to support themselves through criminal ability, they make themselves an enemy of the law. A thief, a murderer, a thug, uh, these things, they, they are abandoning a love of the law. They are making themselves an enemy of the law and they will pay the price of that enmity. So here the questioner says, is this God's criminal code? Well, it is most certainly a warning. It is a stern warning that we not violate God's law, that we not come and say, well, it doesn't matter how that we live. We can live however we want. We are our own God. We are our own sovereign Lord. Not so. To make yourself a friend of the world makes you an enemy of God infinitely better for time and for eternity that you be a true, true friend of the Lord Jesus Christ having surrendered to him and that you walk in that way. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, r 3 c 2H6. The full group sings The Church is One Foundation, and then once again they sing Sunlight. by water and the 
The most recent release from Faith to Live by Resources is Hair mit Dir. It is 18 selections, 14 of them music, four scripture readings, all of them completely in the German language for your blessing, especially you who know the German language and enjoy it and work well in it, or perhaps you have a friend, someone nearby you who would enjoy having this. Herr mit dir, 14 songs, four scripture readings to bless and to strengthen your faith. Ask for it when you write to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Or call us toll free 1 833 367 3852. Also, our website, faith to live by.ca, has the means of you contacting us and requesting a copy of the CD to be mailed to you, or the audio files are there for your free download and you can access them immediately without waiting for the post office to do its work. All of our resources are always sent, free and postage paid, and also the audio files on the website, they are free as well. Just before the message, we have Terry and Tim singing, Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. Filled with sorrow and care, hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted. At Calvary, Jesus is very near. Cast your care on Jesus today. Leave your worry and fear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted. At Calvary, 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 burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Troubled soul, the Savior can see every heartache and tear. Burdens are lifted. is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. We consider the lift-off readiness that we need to have if we are to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you lift-off ready? Are you ready to meet the Lord Jesus? Do you have an answer for, why should I allow you into my heaven? In John chapter 4, we have the testimony of a group of people. Up to this point, we have in this series of sermons considered various individuals. Now we have a group of people, Samaritans, who come and they make their declaration of faith, of confession, of delight in Jesus Christ as the one and only answer for the need of our heart. 
John chapter 4 tells us the wonderful story of Jesus needing to go through Samaria. He knew that there was a woman who would go out in the middle of the day when no one else was going out to the well with her jar of water in order to draw and to take for her family. That said volumes about how that she was unwanted in the social company that was round about her. She was an outcast. She was someone whose presence the others skirted around. Jesus interacted with her. He talks to her about living water, about water that is not to be found in any well of this world, but water which can truly satisfy. The woman says to Jesus, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet, and I have a question that's been burning in my heart. It has to do with geography. It really doesn't have to do so much with spiritual matters. You Jews say that you're supposed to worship in Jerusalem, and we Samaritans, we have another idea, which is the right one. And Jesus, he says, look, Please do not be confused. Worship is not a matter of where exactly you stand. It's where you stand physically, where you stand with your feet. It's where you stand with your heart. That is the vital question. Those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth, for this is the kind of worshipers God is looking for. He's not concerned about the physical geography on this world. He's looking for the position of the heart. Now the woman goes back to town and interestingly the very reason that she came out to the well that day to draw water, she leaves her water pot there. She didn't fill it up and then go rushing home. She just left it there because she had met someone who had spoken words of life to her. I want to especially speak about those who would hear what this woman said. She goes back to them and says, is this not the Christ? I met someone of the most remarkable character. They come, they investigate, they, like the Bereans that we read about in the book of Acts, they are eager to find out whether what they heard from the woman was in fact so. They wanted to experience it for themselves. They wanted to dig deeper as to what exactly was going on. Was this a true report or was it a fabricated one? Verse 39 of John chapter 4, from that city many of the Samaritans believed in him, in Jesus, because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me all things that I have done. So there were some who came to faith in Jesus Christ, as I say, they were now lift off ready, they realized who Jesus truly was and is. They realized that here was the Son of God. Here was one who spoke like no one else spoke. And he had power like no one else. He had authority to speak these words. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they were asking him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. Then we read, many more believed because of his word. So there were those who believed in Jesus because of the word of the woman. Then Jesus, having spent 48 hours with them and him sharing with them personally and speaking into their hearts, speaking into their lives, calling them to know Christ and to know God's plan for them, many more believed. And they were saying to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe. There, you see, there is a change of the basis of their belief. It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard, oh, here's wonderful words, we have heard for ourselves and know that this one is indeed the Savior 
of the world. Now there can't be any higher praise than that, than for these Samaritans to say to the woman in confession of who they believe Jesus to be, that he is the savior of the world. We're so glad that he came by our way. He could have skirted on his way another way. He didn't have to stop by Jacob's well, but he stopped. He ministered to the woman. He cared for her. He spoke words of life to her. And he comes to this place. He comes and he speaks words of life. And what comes alive in the heart is unmistakable transformation. These people, they say, look, we have heard for ourselves. Let me ask the question in a personal way to you. Have you heard for yourself? Have you just heard about or have you heard for yourself? Do you believe because it's sort of the party line or have you come to the conviction for yourself that Jesus is the Christ? He is God's one and only son. He is the one who was to come into the world as the savior of the world. What do you think? What is your conviction? How do you see these things? The woman, she indeed was changed that day and by that encounter, but it wasn't just the woman that confessed Jesus as the Lord, as the Savior, but it was a whole group. They are not named. We don't know any of their names, but we have their confession. We have their testimony and their witness that Jesus is indeed the Savior of the world. Press that home to your own heart, for this is the most vital question. If we do not answer this question, it is like a pilot getting into the plane and not checking whether he has fuel. He's not checking his instruments. He's not checking the readiness of his aircraft. He's saying, well, what will happen will happen and we'll just take our chances. A pilot, if he has any sense whatsoever, if he has any regard for his own life and for his cargo and for the passengers who fly with him, he will with great exactness, that pilot will check everything out and will want to make sure that the plane is lift off ready as it goes roaring down the, the runway. Are you lift off ready? We read that these people they had come to this belief, Jesus is the savior of the world. Is that what you believe? Or do you believe that he is just a savior? Is he the one and the only? Or is he one of the options? Come to know him. Come to delight in him that he is the one and the only. And then rejoice in him today. There's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 